So last week I did the 10 pitchers that are gonna have a bounce back season in 2021. So let's flip it now to the offensive side, talking about the 10 hitters that are gonna have a bounce back season in 2021. Again, for bounce back players, because I still saw comments. They had to have been good, had a bad season, and now they're going to bounce back to being good. Don't comment rookies. Rookies are not bounce back players. Those would be breakouts or just like rookie stars. We're looking for guys that were good, were bad, and then are getting good again. Simple, bounce back. Have to be able to bounce back from something. So I got 10 players from a bunch of different teams all over the leagues, all over the divisions. Gonna tell you why I think they're bounce back candidates, why they're the best picks here. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a like on them. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. Click that sub button, join the team. We're almost at opening day. Get in the comments down below. Let me know what players you think were left off this video or guys that maybe you think are bounce back candidates yourself. And make sure you drop me a follow on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, second channel, TikTok. Links to all my social media are in the description down below. Getting us started off with the first player of the video. It seems like the most obvious one, Chris Christian Yelich of the Milwaukee Brewers. 2020 was a bad year. I mean, Christian Yelich started off the year rough. Something like it started off the year three for 34. It's hard to come back from that, and he just never recovered. But despite the three for 34 start, still finished with a 205 average, 356 on base, which is extremely high for that kind of batting average, 430 slugging, 430 slugging, and a 786 OPS to give him an OPS plus at 111. This is a guy who won the MVP in 2018, arguably should have won it in 2019. His numbers were insane. You take those two years, he has an OPS above a thousand batting average above 320 on base percentage around 415 420 average and he's gonna hit 40 homers steal 30 bases he's one of the best players in the league 2020 was a short season only 58 games and again that slow start is what made him kind of finish with these terrible numbers while the strikeouts were up a ton for him don't look too much into it he had a lot of caught looking strikeouts still was in the 99th percentile and exit velo and hard hit rate he was one of the better hitters in the percentile rankings it just didn't translate to the numbers because it was a short season but Christian Yelch is gonna be fine. Definitely an obvious choice here for a bounce back player in 2021. For the second player, I've got Shohei Otani. And again, this is the hitter video. So we're only going to talk about him at the plate. Pitching, I think is going to be a little different story, but at the plate, Otani has been really good since he's made it to the major leagues. 18 and 19 combined. He had an 883 OPS, 286 average, 351 on base, 532 slugging, averaging about 20 homers, 20 doubles, and 10 stolen bases a season, playing 105 games at the plate. But if you take that to a 162, that's 30 homers, 30 doubles, almost 20 stolen bases, and 100 RBIs, 883 OPS. Otani is low key a really, really good hitter. 2020 wasn't good though. 190 average, 291 on base, 366 slugging, 657 OPS. I think he was really struggling with the fact that he just wasn't able to pitch because of his arm and he was struggling and it carried over into the game. COVID season, don't look too much into it. Same thing with Otani, still hitting the ball pretty hard, still has a good eye at the plate. He's a great athlete. I fully expect him to rebound offensively. Pitching side, maybe a different story. At number three, this is one of my favorite hitters in all of Major League Baseball, Nick Castellano. Now he started off the season scalding hot. Like he was on pace to be an MVP in 2020, but the second half of the 60 game season, he was super slowed down. Up until game number 39, he had an OPS of above 900 and it just plummeted after that. Castellano still finished with 14 homers, 11 doubles, 34 RBIs, a 225 average, which is way too low for the kind of hitter he is. 298 on base, again, way too low. 486 slugging and a 784 OPS to give him an OPS plus at 102. The power is still there. He is JD Martinez light in my eyes, a guy who who also had a down year and may be making an appearance later in this video, but just like Yelich, in the top 80 percentile and exit velo, hard hit rate, X Woba, X slugging, barrel percentage, he still hit the ball very hard, hit into a little bit of unfortunate luck, and the Reds just didn't hit a lot last year to begin with. Castellanos is going to be fine, expect him to bounce back completely and put up those mega offensive numbers that you've seen in past years from him. Next up, let's switch it to the south side of Chicago, talking about Yohan Mankata of the White Sox, who had a bad season after kind of having his breakout in 2019, where he finished with a 915 OPS, a batting average over 300, 548 slugging, 25 homers, 34 doubles, 10 stolen bases. That was the Yohan Mankata everybody had been waiting for. His 25 year old season, not so much. 225 average, 320 on base, 385 slugging, and a 705 OPS. Those weren't great numbers. It was a below average OPS season. But the big thing with Yohan Mankata is he had COVID and it really affected his health. It really affected his play. That is what hurt his game in 2020. Getting COVID early on, he never really recovered like some of these other players. So for for Yohan Mankata, still, he's only 26 years old. He's put up big numbers in years past. And with that White Sox lineup and how loaded it is now, a little bit of weight has been lifted off his shoulders. He doesn't have to be a heavy lifter. I think Yohan Mankata is going to have a fantastic 2021. He's going to be an all-star caliber player. The White Sox got a really good player in him. I fully expect him to bounce back this season. At the halfway point of today's video, number five, I've got Austin Meadows of the Tampa Bay Rays. Ooh, wow, man, he had a really bad 2020. But you saw what he did in 2019. And even in 2018, 
18. That's the kind of hitter Austin Meadows is. You take 18 and 19, combine them, an 888 OPS, 290 average, 354 on base, 534 slugging, 162 game average of 33 homers, 32 doubles, 14 stolen bases. He's a DH. That's definitely the position he should be playing, not great in the field. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the hitting. Now, 2020, like I said, obviously he needs to have a bounce back season to be included in this video. It wasn't great. 205 average, 296 on base, 371 slugging. It was abysmal. We don't need to talk too much more about it. But just like a lot of these other guys, Austin Meadows is still hitting the ball hard, still at a high rate, still has a good eye at the plate. Those are all things they can translate back into success in 2021. And he's just too talented to stay down like that. So again, short season COVID, Meadows will be back. Now for number six, there was a couple players I could have put here for the New York Mets, but I ended up going with Francisco Lindor because I think Lindor is truly going to bounce back. I think he's going to have an MVP type season for the Mets this year. And yes, probably a little bit of Mets bias, but if you've seen this guy in the past, you know how good he can be. From 17 to 19, he averaged 34 homers, 42 doubles, 21 stolen bases a season with an 856 OPS while playing phenomenal elite defense. You cannot find that too often in Major League Baseball at the shortstop position. That is ridiculous. 2020, he even admitted it. He wasn't playing as hard. He wasn't happy with what was going on in Cleveland. He wasn't happy about COVID. And the numbers showed. Career lows in batting average, on-base percentage, slugging, OPS. It was the worst season of his career, but it was only 60 games. And even still in those bad 60 games, he had an OPS plus above 100, so he was still above average by about 2%. And he still played good defense at shortstop. Lindor's now with the Mets. He's on a winning team in a winning environment. Not that the Indians weren't a good team, but they weren't keeping him there. He was waiting to find out where he was going to be next. And I think he's found that place with the New York Mets. He's going to turn it around. He's going to be a beast. He's going to be an MVP candidate. And I can't believe I'm saying it, but Francisco Lindor is a Met. That's unbelievable. He's bouncing back. Oh yeah. And also another one of these guys with the percentile rankings. I mean, he's pretty high up there with all his stuff offensively. Let's move it to the West Coast now. Los Angeles Dodgers. Bad year last year for Max Muncy, but we've seen this guy hit too many times. This isn't the Max Muncy we're going to see in 2021, especially when they added even more great players. Muncy had back-to-back -back outstanding seasons in Los Angeles after relatively being a nobody in Major League Baseball. 2018 and 19 finished with a 927 OPS combined, averaging 35 homers and 20 doubles a season with 88 RBIs. I mean, at the plate, he's phenomenal and he has a great eye, walks a ton, a 381 on base percentage. But like many of the other people in this video, 2020 was a different story. A 192 average, which is crazy low, still had a good on base percentage though, 331. That's something to look at. His batting average was about 50, 60 points lower than normal, but his on base percentage wasn't down as much. He still had a great eye at the plate. The slugging was down, the OPS was down, and he was a below average hitter last year. But again, when you look deeper into the numbers, he hit into some bad luck, still bearing up the ball at a high percentage, still walking at a high rate. You've seen Max Muncy play. He's just too good. Again, all these guys, too good to not come back and bounce back for another season in 2021. Plus, I need to see Max Muncy tell Madison Bumgarner to get the ball out of the damn water again. That was fantastic. Now, at number eight, this guy could tell Marte, oh, he's going to blow up again this year. Like, expect another MVP type season, I think, out of him because Cattell Marte is just really good. I mean, first off, he doesn't swing and miss. He only struck out 21 times last year in 195 plate appearances, which put him 99th percentile in K rate and 98th percentile in whiff rate. So not only does he not strike out, he doesn't swing and miss. Now, the exit velos and barrel percentage were down a little bit, but again, a short season, he only played in 45 games, two homers, 14 doubles, 17 RBIs. That's not Cattell Marte. 2019, though, I think that's the Marte you're going to see. 32 homers, 36 doubles, nine triples, 92 RBIs, 329 average, 389 on base, 592 slugging, 981 OPS. Those are the numbers you expect to see from Cattell Marte. And I think you will see that translate again into 2021. Just a weird season. Started off slow. Cattell Marte, give him some more games. He's going to figure it out. He still hit 287 on the year. So he was still putting the ball in play. Just the power wasn't there as much. Maybe it was the juice balls. Maybe that's going to have an effect this year as well. But I think Cattell Marte is going to be just fine. He's too talented of a hitter and he just makes too good of contact with the ball on a consistent basis to not be successful in the league. I teased this guy earlier. Our ninth player that's going to have a bounce back season, it's JD Martinez, Jumbo Don, just dingers, whatever you want to call. JD Martinez is one of the best pure hitters in Major League Baseball. That's a fact. I'm not saying he's one of the best players, but he is one of the best pure hitters. From 17 to 19, he had an OPS over 1,000, batting average at 313, on base 388, slugging 619, averaging 41 homers, 32 doubles, and 113 RBIs a season. He was so good as a DH, he finished fourth in the MVP voting in 2018 and casually almost won the Triple Crown. Very close. 2020, bad year. Seven homers, 16 doubles, 27 RBIs, a 213 average, 291 on base, 389 slugging, and 680 OPS. That's not JD Martinez. That's not the player we know. Again, still barreling up the ball well. I mean, this is a guy who normally has a barrel percentage at 18, 19 percent. 2020, it was down a bit. Same thing with the exit velo. I think JD Martinez is going to be fine. Still hitting the ball extremely hard. Just
just getting unlucky, a hard hit percentage at about 42%, which is crazy because that's actually down for him. But it's not like the K rate particularly went up a lot. The walks went down a little bit. While he is 33 years old, I don't think that JD Martinez is done yet. Playing in Boston, that park plays well for him. He can use the Remonster to his advantage. He can use right center field to get those extra base hits. And the Red Sox are going to be a much improved team. JD Martinez definitely bouncing back in 2021. And then for the last and final player in today's video, Javi Baez. Now, the Saber Metrics numbers are not going to like Javi Baez. He doesn't walk, doesn't have a particularly good eye, and swings and misses a lot. But Javi Baez has played at MVP levels before, and Javi Baez is a great offensive player. Plus, with that glove, he's always going to stick in a lineup. And 2020, I mean, there's no way he can go back to that. A 203 average, 238 on base. He only walked seven times, struck out 75, 360 slugging, 599 OPS. This one might catch a little heat. I get it because he doesn't walk and he does strike out a ton. But we've all seen Javier Baez play. He's one of the most exciting players in the league. He's got the power. He's got the flair. He's a great base runner. He is way too talented to be a 203 hitter with a 599 OPS. That is a player who should be sitting in the minors and maybe shouldn't play at the major league level. Javi Baez is the guy we saw in 18 and 19. The 865 OPS, 30 homers, 30 doubles, 16 stolen bases, almost 100 RBIs, electric defense, 286 average. He's never going to walk. Hopefully we can see him be a little more patient at the plate. That would be great. It would help him out a ton. But even without that, the dude just absolutely mashes. And he didn't do it in 2020, but I think he's going to be back for 2021. That Cubs team, again, it was weird. No one in the central particularly hit well, especially on the Cubs. I'm not worried about Javi Baez. I think he comes back strong. The only thing that's a little scary, I guess, is going to be that K rate and that walk rate. They're shockingly high and low. He's just too good. He's too good. Javi Baez, bounce back 2021. Put it in your books. So those are the 10 players that I think are going to bounce back in the 2021 season. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? What are some players that I may be snubbed and left off the list? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. It really does help out the channel as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the baseball content coming at you in 2021. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, all my social media is in the description down below. That's where we're wrapping up today's video, guys. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.